How y'all doing? Y'all good? We good? Thanks, but um, it's glistening. I mean, all right, you know, I appreciate y'all. Listen, um, I'm gonna open with a poem, if that's cool with y'all. Okay, that's the song. This poem's actually dedicated to my father, Vincent Blackwell. Unfortunately lost my dad about four years ago. Lost my mother approximately six years ago. I write a lot of poetry about my parents. And the interesting thing, even though they're no longer here with me, I learned a lot of their lessons now through memory, right? Since they're not here physically, I have to remember things that they told me back in the day. You know, it's kind of hard now when I'm trying to argue with the cable guy at this age, you know, like, you know, having my father there to tell me what to say, uh, trying to go buy my first car, not having them there. So just kind of remembering certain things, certain details, right? And so my father was a Scorpio. Any Scorpios in the building tonight? Okay. This is going to be an interesting poem. Um, yeah, people hate us. Um, I'm a Scorpio, father's a Scorpio. We bump heads a lot. Um, it was interesting because growing up, there were very few ways we were able to get along, but we were able to communicate through sports. Who can guess what sport? <laughs> no, basketball. <laughs> basketball, it was soccer, no, basketball. Um, and it was interesting, my dad, he wouldn't come to any choir shows, any plays, no soccer games. He would sit in the car and watch from afar, but if it was a basketball game, he was early, he was on time, he was front row seat, and he was the loudest one, maybe right or wrong, it didn't matter, he was there. So this poem's dedicated to him. Any basketball fans in the building tonight? Okay, not just soccer heads, this is helpful. All right, who raised their hand? Let me see, what's your team? Golden State, okay. What's your team? Uh, the Wizards. The Wizards, okay, okay. What we got? Dallas Mavericks. Oh, Boston. Boston Celtics. Okay, I rock with them. We cool, we cool. I'm like the Mavericks. Oof. All right. So, good. This poem's going to be great. Just wanted to do a little temperature check. All right. This poem is called Shaq. <clears throat> I could never make my free throws. My lips could always peck the glass with the sweetest kiss and the softest touch. My three-pointers, my three-pointers would leap to the peaks effortlessly like gazelles and then fall to the bottom of the net, sometimes met with full contact to the body or the arm of my defender. No matter the contender, competition was my ammo and I thrived in that with the rush, jump shot, fade, floater, rebound, put back, you name it, it's game on, gone in my zone. No, literally in the zone, breaking through defenses, plays, dropping buckets in my defender's face until I'm faced with the loudest whistle. And the play would stop, but instead I hear a screeching siren and my heart drops sinking to the bottom of my stomach just like that layup I missed should have sunk into the bottom of the net and the ref yells, foul! And you guessed it, it's free throw time. It's me versus myself. Now the point of free throws is that they're free. <laughs> My father used to ingrain this message in my brain, just air and opportunity between you, the basket, and the rambunctious crowd. But you, sweetheart, cannot get distracted. Keep your eyes on the goal. And this message repeated through endless days, hours, nights, especially nights, 
when aiming for the in, when, when aiming for the rim was like flicking a penny blindfolded into a soda bottle. He make me work on my breaths, my rhythm, my focus, my aim, my release, and I hated it because what was one dry additional point compared to my beautifully boosted rainbow threes, my stylish agile layups. He would argue that the game isn't always that lovely, that there'll be times when the game is on the line, it'll just be me, no teammate, no coach, and it'll feel like the whole world is against me. And that one dry additional point now turn to mistake can now dictate the outcome of the game. Don't you dare, child, think that free throws are pointless and feel as though there's points or any less. And I can recall that one game we played, and you couldn't pay the ref to give me a foul until it was 10 seconds left, and I split down the lane, and I'm going, and it's tied, and I'm foul hard. You know, I'm talking like big shack foul hard, and all I hear is this booming voice racing through the crowd like an ambulance racing through traffic. And I look up, and I see you amongst the sea of people in favor of the opposing team. He says, that's my baby. <laughs> Take us home, dog. But all I hear are sirens. Breathe. Focus. Release. I miss. As I drop my head, that booming voice, louder, closer, raises my chin. I said, take us home, dog. My dad has now ascended from the crowd to my team's bench. Not sure if that is allowed, but what I do know is that I have and will continue to shoot free throws my entire life, that this world is nothing but a basketball court. And most of the, most of the time, our biggest enemy is ourselves. Too consumed with the dunks, the crossover, the oohs and the ahs. We forget about those critical moments. You know, that gut check time. And in those moments when it feels like the whole world is against you, and it's just you, the basket, and the rambunctious crowd is when every crowd-pleasing play that happens and prior breaks is make or break, it bears no weight. And yes, it may sound easier said than done because free throws are supposed to be free, right? 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 right. But there's nothing free about facing the bottom of the fourth quarter, tired, drained, with hundreds of eyes glaring at you, chanting towards you in unity, but against you, wishing for your fail, hoping for your demise, distracting you from your win or your purpose. But what I learned that in these moments, all you can do is drown out the demons that are the overseers of your insecurities. Reminisce on every practice, every lesson that prepared you for this time and shoot for your life. And even though you're no longer here with me, Dad, I can still hear you cheering for me Amen. in the distance, in the crowd, in the audience. I look at my pops. I smile. I breathe. I focus. I regroup. I pace. I fear. I believe. I dribble. I form. I release. I watch. I soar. I took us home. I take us home every day, dog. I take us home. That's that poem. Uh, yeah. Shnami. Woo. I'm sweating. Give me a second, y'all. Holy yeah. shit. Everyone, thank you for coming to our sixth annual Our Words, Our City Poetry Showcase. Make some noise! My name is Charity Blackwell. I am the Senior Advisor for Arts and Culture at DC Scores, and I'll be one 
of three of your hosts for this evening. Thank you to the beautiful MLK Memorial Library for hosting us on this amazing occasion. And thank you for occasions for food and the reception. Some of you may know DC Scores is a soccer organization, but we have been much, much more of that for the past 25 plus years of history, remaining as one of the few youth organizations in DC. Tonight, you'll see why as you'll be treated with inspiring performances from professional spoken word artists and DC Scores poet athletes. You might recognize some of them. We have some alumni from the past, but you will also, and you should be excited to be introduced to some new voices among our poet athletes. The Youth Poetry Slam at home and even on the weekend, you'll see much of their work to hone their craft, polish their words, and represent their city which is DC. All you have a role tonight to show as well. I know you're all looking around, oh, well, the youth are performing. I know other folks are performing, but what about us? Don't worry. We have a community poem. There should be clipboards that will be passed around to each section. So what you'll do is when you get your clipboard, you will write a line to the poem. And at the end of the show, we will share whatever y'all come up with in front of all of you. It's gonna be interesting. Do we have any other poets in the building? Just raise your hand. Oh, this is going to be an interesting poem. I'm a little concerned, but this will be fine. All right. But we could never pull this incredible event off without the support of our new executive leader. So before, executive director. So before we get things started with our poets, please help me welcome to the stage our executive director, Katrina Owen. Thank you, Charity. Thank you all. Thank you, Charity, for that amazing poem. Thank you all for being here. Um, as Charity mentioned, I'm Katrina Owens, I'm the Executive Director here at DC Scores, and I'm very excited for tonight's program. I know our poet athletes have put in so much work to share their words with all of you today. So thank you for being here in this space with us together. A big part of the support for tonight comes from our host committee who's been behind the scenes planning and supporting our staff to make sure tonight is amazing. So I want to give a quick shout out to the host committee. Ann Friedman, the founder and CEO of the New Planet Word Museum. Andy Shalal, the founder of Busboys and Poets. Yeah. And a pillar in the DC's uh, incredible poetry scene here in DC. Andrew Howe, a DC Scores board mem member from Monument uh, Advocacy. Ben James Brown, board member. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Uh, board member from Wells Fargo. David Grasso, board member from our Fox and longtime champion of DC Scores and arts and education in our city. Arlene Selber, a retired marketing exec, a patron of the arts in DC, and a DC Scores donor. So thank you to all of them who've really been behind the scenes supporting tonight and making tonight possible. I also want to give a shout out to the DC Scores staff, in particular these three right here that you'll get to hang out with tonight. Charity and Tatiana. Ooh, uh, yeah. Who have done an incredible job. So, first of all, as you know, are all amazing artists in their own right, and who have done an incredible job supporting our young people and preparing the next generation of amazing artists in our city. So, thank you. Tonight you'll hear the term poet athletes a lot, and true to form, we're joined this evening by our partners at the very top of the DC sport and poetry scene. Busboys and poets and Planet Word ensure that we have teaching artists, performance spaces, and a network of poetry lovers dedicated to ensuring our young people have access to the arts. But we also have incredible representation from our partners at DC United. I don't know where they're at, where are they at? national champions, the Washington Spirit, both of whom are here to show up in force to support our poet athletes. So before I take my seat uh, to enjoy this amazing program, 
I want to express my gratitude to Richard Reyes Gavilan. He's the executive director of the DC Public Library. And he's with us tonight. Look at this beautiful space. Um, to welcome you all to this amazing space um, here at the library. So thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you. Um, thanks, Katrina. And uh, thank you, Charity, for making this very easy for us, uh, being very charming and <laughs> eloquent with our words. Hi, folks. I'm Rich Reyes Gavilan. I'm the executive director of the DC Public Library. <laughs> And I just wanted to take a minute to welcome you all to the new Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library. It's 50 years old this year, but it's brand new. As you can see, the space that we're in, um, the roof terrace that you might have enjoyed for a few minutes before this program started, um, all the things that we've got in 400,000 square feet of this building, whether it's emerging technology labs and 3D printers and tools and a playground slide. You may have seen that when you walked into the building, kids sliding down from the kids' room down to the first floor, study spaces, gaming spaces. Uh, this building is yours. Um, I have to emphasize that. Um, I spent six years working on this project, but we did this for district residents and district and visitors, so please come back to this space, enjoy it. Uh, come to the DC Central Kitchen, Marianne's Cafe, down on the first floor, and use it. This is uh, one of the most amazing assets that any resident will ever have, is their uh, 21st century public library. So please do come back. Um, I forgot to mention, we also have a lot of books. Um, <laughs> we are a library after all. We've got a lot of poetry. We've got lots and lots of poetry. And it's fitting, of course, that we have a lot of poetry in a, na in a building named after Dr. King, because Dr. King, of course, was a poet. Uh, many people don't consider Dr. King a poet, but uh, you know when he wrote of uh, moving from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice, that was poetry. Uh, when you think about the power of language to, uh, to make change and to impact behavior, uh, there was nobody better than Dr. King at using his words uh, to affect change. And I'm so proud of the kids who are here and all of the poets who raised their hands a few minutes ago because it's our words, not our weapons, that will make a change as we move forward. Um, and we, uh, we at the library, we're, we're here to help. So we've got this beautiful facility, the, the, the Dr. King Library, but we've also got uh, 25 just beautiful uh, libraries around the District of Columbia, all of which have been probably built or renovated since 2010. And a phenomenal staff, we're here uh, to support you in your huma hum humanistic endeavors or whatever endeavors you may have. So, uh, so come back, use us as a resource, visit us online. We've got tremendous resources online as well. Um, again, thank you, Katrina. Thanks to the host committee, my friend David Grasso, for inviting me up here. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo is here, and you guys are in for a treat. Um, Elizabeth was the first um, online, uh, we, we did our first online program in the pandemic with Elizabeth uh, speaking to hundreds of people across the city uh, and talking about her craft and her wonderful work. So, um, so what a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, speaker to have here tonight. So thanks, and I'll stop here and I'll bring it, oh, Charity's coming back, right, I think? Yes, thanks yes. again, folks. Let's give it up one more time for Richard, y'all. Clap it up, clap it up. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our ASL interpreter for the night, Billy. Thank you so much for being here. So, now, we all know why we're here. So who is ready to see our poet athletes? Let me hear you make some noise. All right. When I say spoken, you say words spoken, spoken. When I say DC, you say scores, DC, DC, scores. DC. Y'all got it. Okay. The kid got it. So that's what matters right now. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. So it's it's about that time, and I know that 
You are used to seeing our youths at the soccer games and on the soccer fields, but I'm really excited for all you to see our poet athletes on the stage and on the night, on this mic. But before we do that, there are a couple of ground rules that I want to set for the tone. I got three main rules. Let me hear you say three. Three. Let me hear you say rule number one. Rule number one. Please turn off put on vibrate or silent any of your mobile devices that you have tonight. We are wanting to, we are going to be performing our, uh, recording our performances tonight, but we also most importantly want to make sure that we are respecting every artist that comes up here on the stage. Some of the kids that are getting up here, this is their first time. They may be nervous, any type of distraction. We don't want them to throw that off. If that's cool, let me hear you say cool. All right, let me hear you say rule number two. Respect the microphone, but most of all, respect the person on the stage. Give them your attention. Like I said, um, you know, this is some people's first stage, and this is going to be a little bit backward because I just told y'all, you know what I'm saying, to turn your stuff off and be quiet. But now I'm also about to tell y'all y'all can talk and make noise. But for, for, with, with purpose, right? So anybody ever been to an open mic just by a show of hands? Okay, so y'all know the vibes. So basically, how this works, the energy that you give the person on the stage is the energy that they're gonna give you back. So if you hear something, hey Marjan, if you hear something that you like, right? There's a couple of ways that you can do that. So if I like spit something real fire, you're like, oh my gosh, I really like that, but I don't know what to do. You can do something like this. You can snap, let me hear you snap. Wow, y'all are good. Amazing, you can even do something that we call clapping. Let me hear you clap. Outstanding, that's good. You can even do something like that we call a uh, busboy's chocolate at the roof of your mouth. Mmm, let me hear you say mmm. That's if you like hear something like, oh my goodness, I wish I wrote that myself. Like they're speaking my life. That's when you say mmm. You can even combine the mmm with snaps. Let's hear mmm, ooh, yeah, it sounds sexy, right? So yeah, keep that going, all right? And there's something else that you can do if you hear something you like, ooh, that I need to get up and scream like I feel like I'm church. You can even do. Wait, what happened? What'd you say? Oh. Okay, so you can get up and um, if you yeah, like do, you can do an amen. Let me hear you say amen. amen. You can even do a yes. Let me say yes. Okay. You can even if you're like, you know what? Forget that amen. Forget that yes. I don't what. I don't like to talk. You know. You can even do the silent Steph Curry three. All you gotta do is this. <laughs> we know what that means. We understand that. We're receiving that as you're in agreement with what's going on up here. So clap it up, slap it up, snap it up, clap it up. Mmm, yes, uh. Do what? Oh, you can do period, purr. Everybody say purr. There it is, right there. So purr it up. Well, all we ask is that you do it in a respectful, a respectable way. All right, let me hear you say rule number three. Rule number Last but not least, we're gonna have a whole lot of fun tonight. I want to welcome everybody to Our Words, Our City. With that being said, we are going to now bring up our first performers of the evening. And I'm gonna figure out where I am. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's me. <laughs> Welcome, sir. I know who it is. So coming up first to the stage, this is a DC Scores alum. They used to attend Kip Key Academy. They are a talented, talented, talented individual. They are up here, and this is like their third Our Where Is Our City, I think. Third or fourth, something like that. So they're gonna come up here and open up. So you know if they're opening, they're gonna bring that fire. I need everybody clap it up for Jermani Benson. Keep those claps going all the way up to the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Germani Benson, thank you. I am a senior at Kip College Prep. <laughs> thank you. Um, tonight's poem, um, I wrote it in dedication to May being Mental Health Awareness Month. So, um, enjoy. Yes. I met
met a murderer. I mean, I meet him every season, but he's stronger every time. It's like meeting the same stranger over and over again. You become acquainted. I met a murderer. I mean, I know him pretty well, but not more than he knows me, and he's so inconsistently consistent. He comes around the most when I start feeling like me. I met a murderer. Said face to face, eye to eye, chest to chest as he mirrored my breathing. I met a murderer in the spring. He followed me into the winter. I tried to shake him for the summer, but he wouldn't fall back. I met a murderer in the coffee shop. He invited me to a park. He invited me back to my space, and now he lives in my space indefinitely. I met a murderer in the park, inviting him back to my space, and now he lives in my space indefinitely. I met a murderer at the beach, the place where I'm supposed to feel the most peace, inviting him back to my space, and now he lives in my space indefinitely. Why am, why am I always meeting this murderer? I heard he's a seasonal killer, moving at faster paces than serial killers. I told him I would call for help, and he simply laughed evilly. How could you call for help when everybody's lying like they never even seen to me? He told us he'd be running with us at school, eating with us at breakfast, walking us into work. He even embedded himself into the soles of our shoes. So now even our souls bear the dudes of this hypnotic killer. He chooses to attack when we start to feel tall, and he attacks in many forms. I asked him for his name. He said he go by Silent Killer, but I know him as Depression. Thank you. in practice and she started out that poem we were like wait a minute you can't just walk in here talking about you met a murderer <laughs> but when she got to that end we we're like yes we're here with you amazing job thank you so much Jermani awesome outstanding outstanding amazing work all right cool let's keep it moving and grooving up next we have another alumni their name is Justice. They used to attend Beers Elementary School. Next year, they will be attending Duke Ellington of the Arts. So I need everyone to start clapping it up right now for Justice! Shut up. That's what I want to hear. Um, so I'm so happy that Charity introduced me. But for now, you all can call me Bi, or Black Eyes Fish for a longer one. It's nice to meet everyone. This is my first time in a while, actually. I've, it's been a while, really. Um, so uh, I'll be doing not one, but two poems. And um, I got a few questions before I start. So um, we all know. Everybody has been in a community, so who in here has been in a community that they're really happy with? Just clap your hands, just clap your hands or something like that. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I like the enthusiasm I see. All right, um, the first poem is all about my favorite month, the Pride Month, as many people might know. Pride Month is around the corner, so clap your hands if you are ready for Pride Month. Clap your hands. This is good, this is good, we actually got a lot. So, without further ado, um, get ready for my poem, 50-50, I hope y'all enjoy. <sighs> we know a dog's a whole package. Think about it for five seconds. Okay, now think of half of that for another five seconds. Do you see that line? People expect us to be that dollar bill. Not anything less because it's viewed as an insult. Some people have the audacity to believe and say that non-binaries and dummies don't exist. 
Look who's the fool now. We have never been a full dollar from the jump. We've been treated like some 50 cents, and we all know that doesn't get you in Arizona. <laughs> My question for y'all is why is we getting so much backlash? Yet, we are the same species living on the same world. Okay, okay, I'll admit, Evies do get some representation, but they still get the same treatment as, uh, as Demis every single time they come out the closet. Listen to me, we are not in 1965 nor the Great Depression anymore. Why, oh why, do we get the same phrases like, <clears throat> God only made two genders, or we only raised you like a young man or a young lady. Man, shut up! <laughs> Where's my congrats, or I'm so happy that you find your own path. Where is it, huh? Where is it? I'm waiting. <laughs> I guess we a dollar and 50 cents, but nobody sees that. Demis and Emmys are still a full dollar. We are still the whole package. Yeah. Don't get it twisted, sweetheart. <laughs> we are the same human beings. That's some aliens from outer space. We are still the whole package. Don't forget that one bit. <laughs> all right, all right. So, I, all right. I just had to do one today. So, um, thank y'all for actually knowing me. I am so happy, and I can't wait to see y'all outside this auditorium. So, thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, okay, clap it up one more time for justice, y'all. Thank y'all, thank you. <laughs> justice, we rehearsed one poem. <laughs> Don't be trying to put us on blast out here, like I guess I can only do one, and then walk off. <laughs> one poem. <laughs> it's the, one poem. Who? Ah! So, <laughs> y'all having a good time? Say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. yeah. Word. Let's keep it moving and grooving. So, like I said, I'm one of three of your hosts for this evening, and it brings me great pleasure. If you've been to an Our Words Our City event, you've only seen me hosting. Now I know I'm I'm pretty cool. I'm all right, right? I do I do things. However, our poetry team is growing at DC Scores. We have a poetry, a spoken word um, associate manager, as well as a poetry spoken word fellow on our team now. Like we're th three whole people now, y'all. Like it's growing. Um, so it brings me great joy to bring up our spoken word fellow. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal individual. We are extremely blessed to have them a part of our team. They are a professional spoken word artist. They are also a host at the wonderful restaurant and cultural hub, Busboys and Poets. They are a graduate of Princeton University. They are the one and only Malachi Bird. Clap it up for Malachi. <laughs> All right. Oh, y'all look incredible. Look at y'all. I'm down in the front. I didn't even see y'all down here. When I say spoken, y'all say words. Spoken. Word. Spoken. Word. When I say to be, y'all say heard. To be. Word. To be. Word. When I say period, y'all say per. Period. Period. That's what I'm talking about, man. Thank y'all so much for having us, for being um, an incredible audience for our incredible poet athletes. I've had the absolute honor of working with them over the past couple of weeks, getting these poems together, getting these performances together, these long practices, these long weekends. They put in a lot of work, y'all. So make some noise for them one more time, please. 
Thank you. So, I don't think that since we've started the, um, the Our Words, Our City preparation, I don't think I've ever performed a poem for the young folk. So, uh, can I do a poem for y'all? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, God is good. All the time. All the time. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to Our Words, Our City Catholic Church. My name is Pastor Malachi Malpractice Bird, and today we will be discussing an issue that is problematizing our community, and that is ashiness. Y'all, today, if you have your Bibles or your holy books, please open to the book of Malachi, also known as the book of the butters, where it reads... I used to start fires with my handshakes. My fists used to be a recycling bin filled to the brim with powdered donuts. My body drier than a Republican party because it's politics to this skin stuff, y'all. In middle school, my face made the Sahara look like the Amazon. My black bush was a July sandstorm with my black fist pick would push out a gust of dandruff dog. I was so ashy, I got a call back for a job interview. <laughs> so wilted, weathered, waterless, and white, I waved at a policeman and he waved back. That is when I knew that ash was the work of the devil and I had to find God, y'all. Sweet salvation and Satan scorn in the ash from his fire. In Genesis 1:27, it reads: So God created cocoa butter in his own image. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Or commandment three: Thou shalt not take thy melanin in vain. Forgive me, smooth-skinned father, for not alerting my friends of the blizzard that would hit their wrists and ankles. Commandment nine: Thou shalt not bear false witness to thy neighbor. I repent lavishly, lotioned Lord, for all the cracked lips and pasty palms that I know. Please forgive the ashy, for they do not know what they do. We praise you, all moisturized aloe vera, aquafina, a scented God, because you have blessed us with the butters. In a world that always wants to see us burn, how to accept the skin you are in, even when it is covered in ash. Tell me how that ain't a metaphor for the black body's resilience, for resurrection. How to always see the holy in yourself. Black don't crack, cause we don't let it. We moisturize like our words are all we got. I moisturize like this world is all I got. I moisturize like I could meet God at any moment and I need to be prepared. So may the church Say, I will be prepared. I will be prepared. May the church say, I will be prepared. I will be prepared. To take the name of the coconut oil, the olive oil, and the holy shade, and let the church say, we refuse to be ashay. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank. Hello, L. Woo. Thank y'all. Was that cool? That was an okay bump? That was all right? Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, look, everybody like, <laughs> let me check my fingers, you know what I mean? Let me check my elbows, face, everybody check yourself, check yourself. All right, cool. Anyway, thank you so much, Charity, for the introduction. Um, like I said, my name is Malachi Bird. I am a poetry fellow with DC Scores. I've had the honor of working with the young folks and supporting poetry programming at DC Scores. I'm also out of breath. Charity, can I see that? Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Yes. All right, boom. So, actually, can we give it up one more time for Germani and Justice, who opened up our show incredibly, incredibly, incredibly. And I'm going to just say for, for the rest of our poet athletes that I was nervous. Could y'all tell? Could y'all tell? 
Thank you. Thank you. So, you know what I mean? Don't even worry about it. Even professionals feel away when we get up here. You understand? So, word. So, now, part of our Youth Word Project programming not only gives our poet athletes the opportunity to focus more on developing their poetry skills, but we also provide them with the opportunity to work with celebrated uh, spoken word artists in our community and of the world. So, we have some world class poets who were able to work closely with our poet athletes and us in preparation for tonight's program. So, I have the absolute honor of introducing our first poetry special. I'm sorry, yes, our first um, guest speaker tonight, okay? So first, we have Amin TMK. Can y'all make some noise for Amin TMK first? First of all, first of all. Before the professional bio, just a long-term friend of mine, someone who is absolutely inspiring as an intellectual, as an activist, and as a person. So that's number one. But second of all, Amin TMK is a Palestinian-American poet, writing facilitator, teaching artist, vocalist, and organizer with a decade-long career in DC's art education scene. A two-time Grand Slam poetry champion of DC, Southern Fried Slam poetry champion, four-time member of the Busboys and Poets Poetry Beltway Slam team. A mean spoken word poetry has been on TV One's Verses and Flow, Button Poetry, Slam Find, All Deaf Poetry. If you've seen a poem somewhere, a mean probably got the poem in, okay? And his poem, and his critically acclaimed poem, Unsaid, which has garnered hundreds of thousands of views over multiple platforms. Y'all, can we please make the absolute most noise we can, the absolute most noise we can, starting now, starting now, for I mean, y'all. And here at DC Scores, we clap all the way to the stage. All the way to the stage. Hey, what happened to the music stand? Is that still available? Or is it gone? Yeah. Before we do anything. Come on now. Might be on TV. My mama might see me. All right, let's get right. I've been somebody my mother would consider big boned. <laughs> but after much of my life searching for fat skeletons, I realized she was probably making that up. <laughs> In reality, I was a fat kid. Now high school was like a jungle. And I was like a walrus. But the cool kids, the ones with the clear skin and the ball bearings in their hips, were well, they were lions. And I wanted to be like them. Their paws, swagger striped Air Force Ones, manes that resemble baseball caps like the Giants and the White Sox and the Yankees. And then there was me. The kid that during soccer games always got picked to play goalie. I decided that if I were to be a lion, I would first need a mane. I would first need a fitted hat. So, started saving up my lunch money. Huge accomplishment for any fat boy. And after two weeks, <laughs> hey, let's turn up, man, come on, let's turn up! Two weeks, I finally had enough any accomplishment for a fat boy, so I stepped into the mall, walked into the store, growl ready, looking to earn my main hats like the Giants and the White Sox and the Yankees. And my head was too big to fit any of those hats. <laughs> but the cashier gave me hope. She went into the back and pulled out a brand new Detroit Tigers hat. <laughs> and the Tigers had lost 119 games that year a proper metaphor for my high school life. The next day, I was just a chubby kid with the wrong hat. But what I didn't know is that the tiger is the heaviest of the jungle cats. 
It is the only member of the Big Cat family that has no audible roar. It growls at a frequency so low that humans can't hear it. And that was the problem. These humans just couldn't hear me. I was prowling around the wrong shrubbery, whispering around cats too small for my stripes. Now this is what us chubby boys must do. Not puff out our chest, not make alarms out of our throats. We must whisper into the tall grass, gentle but jarring. I mean, who was I kidding? I was no walrus, no lion, but a tiger, scarce and unassuming. The symbol for personal strength, the symbol for invincibility, and the mascot for the best damn cereal in the game. <laughs> yeah. A tiger's roar makes no, lumble, no rumble, but it's always been known to shock and stir its prey. So to all of my chubby kids, do not stay hidden in that brush too long, because they may not hear you, but they sure in hell are going to feel you. Amen. Yeah, let's go. All right. Ooh. Uh, like Nick Jenkins said, drink more water. Um, I want to give a big shout out to DC Scores, everyone is here, uh, Malachi, Bird, uh, Tatiana, uh, Charity, all the young people out here doing their thing. I also just want to let you know there is poetry royalty in the building, uh, Rashid Koblen, uh, Liz Acevedo in the building. I'm very excited to share a stage with them. Um, Y'all watch uh, the NFL or not? Nah? Yeah. Meh? Meh? No. I understand. I understand. Um, I, uh, I recently left the, um, the NFL fan community, maybe for similar reasons as you. Uh, this particular poem is after uh, another poet by the name of Angel Nafis, and this is titled, White Quarterback. <clears throat> White quarterback, pocket passer. White quarterback, above average athlete. White quarterback, Good college coach. Uh, white quarterback keeps it simple on draft day. White quarterback, contract negotiations not on Sports Center. White quarterback in commercial. White quarterback in insurance commercial. White quarterback in shoe commercial. White quarterback in shoe commercial blaring hip hop music. But white quarterback smashing pumpkins fan. White quarterback European girlfriend. White quarterback expensive car stock rims. White quarterback. 10 acres, white quarterback clean shaven, white quarterback clean shaven until December, white quarterback loose jersey, white quarterback comfortable jeans, white quarterback plays game during daughter's birth, white quarterback hands ball to referee, only hits dab as a joke, white quarterback gunslinger, white quarterback has guns, white quarterback shoots guns, white quarterback never shot at, white quarterback focused on the season. White quarterback doesn't comment. White quarterback retired. White quarterback releases statement. White quarterback thinking about coming back to play. <laughs> White quarterback on SportsCenter. White quarterback signs biggest contract in NFL history. White quarterback supports the troops. White quarterback has a granddad in World War, that was in World War II. White quarterback drops a single tear during the national anthem. White quarterback can't understand why anyone would disrespect the flag. White quarterback, too much of a stand-up guy to kneel. White quarterback hands out with Trump. White quarterback doesn't smoke weed. White quarterback drinks IPA. White quarterback addicted to painkillers, white quarterback commentary, white quarterback pronounces Serbian kicker's name properly, white quarterback mispronounces Samoan player's name, white quarterback foundation, white quarterback PSA, Sesame Street, white quarterback retires, white quarterback sports center, white quarterback might come back, white quarterback doesn't come back, white quarterback Hall of Fame, white quarterback, shrine, white quarterback, legend, white quarterback, hero. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay, boom. Um, it's my last piece.
Yeah, I'm having a great time. I had a great time. Um, as uh, the amazing, incredibly talented Malachi Bird, uh, AKA Malpractice, y'all don't practice enough. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I am Palestinian. A lot of things are going on in Palestine. I hope that folks are paying attention as well as uh, what is happening uh, here. Uh, it's a tough world we're living in right now. And while we are in a beautiful, artistic, amazing space together as a community, let us not forget those who cannot be here with us. Um, this is a poem dedicated to my aunties back home. And it's called Places. My auntie smokes argila with us on our last day in Amman. She tells me it's the first time for her smoking hookah in 84 years. <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> she was in Cairo in the 60s, I tell her. I've seen the pictures, auntie. Hair and skirt both meeting at the hamstring. A glass of champagne in your hand. She tells me only apple juice, I mean. <laughs> Crackling, clinched high fives, thigh tapping, hands on belly, clinched high fives woven like Moroccan rugs. As dust turns into black wind, we are reminded of pesky time. I return to the States in the morning. Auntie speaks. I mean, everyone says you will marry an American woman. Take a job after university and forget about a man. Your children will be Christian and eat pork. You'll drink beer and kiss women with wine soaking their mouths. Auntie! <laughs> Everyone says, Amin is not that type of person. Clenched high fives, thigh tapping, hands on bellies. What a gag. The truth of the matter is worse. I will probably marry no one have no children. I write poems and philosophy. I protest and smoke, usually at the same time. I fast outside the holy months and won't eat lamb, not even on Aid. No money for retirement, no degree on a glass case. I have dreams of counterculture and revolution, science and human bodies of all shapes and genders, but here we are. Broken English and Arabic patched with laughter. A perfect painting. An instant classic. Why not write about the beauty in it? So where is the moment, the context, to tell them what I have learned about myself? A cruel breeze blowing the steam from our Nest Cafe. I'll let this trip pass. Let them believe I'll come back an engineer next time. With a wife, a mortgage, and a child with a name they'll recognize. I could tell them now, but it's late. And we have a flight in the morning. Thank y'all so much. That was my time. Give it up for your hosts. I had an amazing experience. Those who do have beards, please brush and moisturize them. It's very important. And um, peace. It took a while to get this. <laughs> Everybody, make some noise for me. One more time, y'all. One more time. One more time. Oh, that was great. Boom. All right. So coming up to the stage now, I'm going to be introducing a set of poet athletes. We'll have one and then the other. And I'm super excited for the progress that these two young folks have made specifically. Um, and their, their poem's gonna knock your socks off. So get your socks ready to get knocked off, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, bet, cool. All right, so first coming up to the stage will be Graciela, and then we'll have Zaria coming to the stage. But first, make some noise for Graciela, y'all! <laughs> This is my first time being at Our Words, Our City, and <laughs> I'm really excited to be here and um, share my poem with you, uh, and it's called My Name Is. 
My name is Graciela. I come from Jennifer and Mario Tello, born in America just like my mom. My father wrapped in Peru's flag, his language foreign to me. My dad teaching me to crave his limey ceviche, and my mouth waters for my mom's dirty rice. When I'm tired, irritated, or angry, my stomach is never satisfied, wanting more peppers, hot sauce, and foods that will burn me so good. <laughs> Only soccer can compete with food. <laughs> when I think of Thursdays, my game days. At seven years old, gearing up with socks and cleats, junior scores at LaSalle in DC. I remember watching Miguel always play, dribbling the white and black ball up and down the green grass. My older brother, my inspiration. I unsure if I could play like him, but never holding myself back. I was determined. Soccer has been my go-to. My father telling me the five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. He's brutally honest, but I need that. Soccer makes me feel so much better than math does. And I love math, like a lot. <laughs> it's a place I zone into, like with ceviche and dirty rice. My name is Graciela. I come from soccer, my culture, and my fierce family. Oh, yeah. Yes, keep it going, keep it going for Graciela! Oh my gosh. That's for you. <laughs> that clap is not for me, sis. You did that. Yo, it was the way that poem came to life. It was the rap in Peru. Like, y'all see the shoulder roll? Did y'all see that? Incredible job, Graciela. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. So now, coming to the stage, coming to the stage. <laughs> Coming to the stage right now, we have an alum of DC schools, a long-term member of DC schools, longer than me, longer than I believe Tati, longer than Charity. <laughs> this person could be the face of DC schools at this point. I want us to make as much noise as we can for an incredible poet, an incredible poet athlete, Zaria, y'all. Make noise for Zaria all the way to the stage, all the way to the stage. Thank you for that introduction. My name is Zaria. As I said, I've been with DC Scores for like forever. So um, yeah, I have a poem called Caliber. I really appreciate everybody coming today. Yeah. <laughs> I have listened to timeless tales of people too terrified to tussle, triggering their trigger finger, finding the tactical rhymes that have pissed through my ghetto childhood's PTSD. You would think that I was gifted a clip and matching bro for my first Christmas gift, the way that I can calibrate the caliber of gun that rang off from across the street. Mm. By the age of two, I knew when to duck in my own living room because 762s go through houses I have. Holes in my memories that often get filled by friends who have holes in their memories, see. Oh. 40s were on my friends' minds like Alzheimer's. And 38s have made the doors to my city's morgue revolve and I'm mad. Because this year, my city has led the country to most kids that got killed with lead. They got filled with lead. See, I'm mad because a lot of my friends are dead. Mm. From filling pencils with lead to filling pistols with lead, me and the men grew up quick. Opposition shouldn't like we playing c -Lord. They keep him with 5.56. Five, five, By the 12th grade, I experienced 12, 12 gauges of a shotgun, and it broke my heart when they told me 300 blackout. It's probably what's a blackout. See, he had football dreams. And I swim my boys quick like a rifle shooting. 220 swift, and I keep on seeing 223s like they my angel numbers. And every morning I wake up and feel about nine millimeters away from being six feet under, but I can't go yet. 
Because I got big dreams like I'm shooting 380s. I just want to live in a world where I feel safe enough to have my babies. But Glocks ain't got no safeties and bullets ain't got any names. And these people got really poor aim. You should be ashamed. Yeah. To be man enough to shoot, but not to be man enough to look when you do it. Y'all took too many babies out of the game. It's too many mothers going through it. I miss sometimes was better. I'm talking before F and the Beretta, because now these people shooting like they got even dead or walking around fully automatic, taking lives like Alpha and Omega. What? I got a question. Want me to start fighting because people knew favorite form of expression is Smith and Wesson, and they going to the courthouse confessing their multiple actions, transgressions that they made out of aggression. Cause the funeral possessions give a whole hoods, PTSD, and depression. It's a cold world. We're getting shot is the only way they remember your name. And doing a shooting can be your quickest five second claim to fame. Thank you. Not encore, <laughs> not running back. <laughs> God, I wish all these poems could be just like on a loop, like, like they are in the museum. Y'all are so incredible. Um, wow. Thank you, Zaria. Thank you, Graciela. Thank you, Germani and Justice, for starting us off. And now I have an incredible honor. I got a bunch of honors tonight. You know what I'm talking about? I do, I do have a bunch of honors. I had an incredible honor of working with the young poet athletes and helping them develop in preparation for this event. And I've also had the incredible honor of having a wonderful team around me. So, of course, we've met Charity Blackwell, the lovely Charity Blackwell. And next, look at that. You're still getting woos. You've been up here like eight times. Look at that. <laughs> and now I would love to introduce Tatiana Figueroa Ramirez, who is the Associate Program Manager of Creative Writing at DC Scores and an incredible co-worker and leader. Maybe y'all please make noise for Tatiana, y'all. Justice, did you say I know her? Oh. It was one of y'all. <laughs> I do love you and I love you. Love you too, boo. Can we give it up one more time for these incredible poet athletes? <laughs> Remember, as if to say, never forget you took your own first steps, foot after foot, and uttered your own first word, syllables stumbling, as you fly over the earth that birthed you. You spitting similes and sentences that burn through the air like cinnamon laced with ginger. Remember, as if to say, no, you are not mad, no, you more than that woman, goddess, blessings that burst churches, overflowing holy water, do not forget this. You, the prayers our ancestors planted below our feet into the roots of gardens, now abundant with what others envy. Remember, as if to say, wrap your mind with your palms to realize you are magic made of stardust, uncopied, irreplaceable. You contain imagination, unseen creation, unrivaled. You, unstoppable against all this world has to offer. Do you not know oceans carved lands for you? Oh. You, a titan showing mercy and grace, a genius in your own right. Remember your birth. Remember how far you have come. Remember the skies you will reach. Remember, when I say remember, what I mean is remember your name, remember your voice, remember your heart. Remember your purpose is greater than I could ever explain. Well Saludos, everybody. How's everyone feeling? Y'all good? All right. So thank you so much for that beautiful introduction, Malachi Berg. Can we give it up for my wonderful co-host right here? My name is Tatiana Figueroa Ramirez, and I am the Associate Program Manager for Creative Writing and at DC Scores, and I honestly cannot begin to tell you how excited I am to be here tonight watching our poet athletes doing their thing here on stage. Y'all ready for your next performer? Yeah. 
All right. Now, all y'all know our poet athletes work with our coaches in the schools, right? You know, they're in the soccer fields, they're on game days, they're in the classroom writing, and our coaches are very talented, right? Yeah. Right? Y'all yeah. better show some love. <laughs> so this next person that I'm going to introduce, our next performer. So Coach Nima Brown led our first ever junior scores program at Center City, including recruitment and parent engagement, fully jumping into the DC scores family. And they even earned the Rookie of the Year Award at this year's score awards. Yeah, give it up. So please help me in welcoming Coach Nima Brown. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you um, to my principal, Ms. Tyson, over there, and everybody in the front row, my support system. I have a few staff up there. This is my first time performing, my first year. So I'm ready. This, this poem is called um, Blue Skies. My skies quickly reform to gray each day I pray. I'm somewhat losing faith and gaining hate. I am no longer fascinated by, fa by beautiful skies. And sometimes I live my life in disguise, but I want to be free. I want to fly so high that the sun rays burn my feet because I'm standing on it. I want to shout so loud that my ancestors hear it. African American, my hands up high, my feet down low, and this the way I gigolo. As I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I feel no evil and I will not get left. And when I walk through them gates, I will have everything checked. Welcome to D.C. where affordable housing isn't so affordable and gentrification seems like genocide. No, I don't want to go outside. Just might be another homicide and yes, I'm tired. I'm tired of turning on the news and hearing about all the 14 year old boys that didn't make it home from school. Police brutality, injustice, society. Just catch me downtown at where the protests be. Rest in peace, Karan Hilton, 20 years old, killed on October 23rd, 2020, in proper police pursuit, results in death. Rest in peace, Cedric Miller, a father killed while walking with his infant and his five-year-old son. Streets taking on my folks, but if I went and read the books, I'd count it how it looked. No jabs, no hooks, either dead or in jail, probably on the way to hell. Talk to me about traumatized. Guns out, mass down, bullets with no name, those boys ain't got no aim. Senseless killings and poor decisions. Hey, little black child, I am the voice and you are the sound. Please lift up your head and don't drop your crown. Thank you. Y'all like Coach Brown, huh? Yeah. How many of y'all love DC scores? Y'all yeah. know we got some DC score swag outside. Y'all better purchase that. We also got Liz's books outside. Y'all better purchase that. Y'all love these kids, right? Help us out then, all right? <laughs> all right. Y'all ready for our poet athletes? So, coming to this stage is one of my baby girls. I love this poet athlete coming to the stage. I love all of them, but this is one of our younger poets in the group. And it's their first time performing at Our Words, Our City. So y'all better show her lots of love. Representing Seton Elementary School, let's show some love for Chloe! Man, it's a lot of people out here. <laughs> it is. <sighs> this is me, Chloe. I am a person who likes to hang out with her friends. We talk, we play all day. Chloe, 
who likes the color purple like amethyst. It makes her smile no matter the weather. Chloe, who likes dogs, love pizza, but no olives. <laughs> Chloe, who likes Summer Walker. Chloe, a proud seat and stinger, who loves her best friends, Corey, Carrion, Anala, Tatiana, Zoe, Zaria, Gigi, and Joseph. Where lives we can be went together, but Chloe can be quiet when she doesn't feel like talking. Chloe, who wants to go to Mexico and LA just to have some fun. Chloe, who likes to get her hair done, nails done, everything done. <laughs> Chloe, who can cheer you up and never let you down, who will always be around. Chloe, who likes writing, but can skip math, reading, science, and everything else. <laughs> this is me, a seat and stinger, a hard worker, poet, athlete. Have you got to know me? Love, Chloe. <laughs> Get to know Chloe. I love it. I love it, Chloe. Let's go. All right. Now I'm going to bring up to the stage an R Words R City alum, DC Scores alum, about to be graduating from Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Get up here, Jaquan. Today I will be performing a poem called, Who Knows About It? I read online that in 2015, black youth's incarceration was five times as high as their white peers. Now it's seven years later and I'm still here. I watched the people in my hood turn a part-time drug into a full-time career. See my community in poverty driven by mixed emotions and guided by false philosophies, live paycheck to paycheck and struggle for their commodities. Yet the people in my hood still be rocking their soccer tees to the man who they think is the modern day Socrates. I walked off stage, claps. A man approached me, he asked me, how did you rap so good? But can't you see that I'm more than just your everyday rapping black man? One who manifested from the compliments that were given off of a backhand. Handed down to me were the hand-me-downs from the man, the system, the one who told me I'd never be anything in life, the one who sees royal shades of purple and deem it incarceration, the one who sees royal shades of purple and deem it insubordination, the one who sees us bleed the same but doesn't believe we should breathe the same. What's the difference between me and you? A black boy on his knees praying for his life or a white boy on his knees praying to Christ. What's the difference between me and you? You told me to dress professionally and I did. I'm sorry I didn't include the noose. I mean not around my neck. I didn't like the feeling of the tie. You told me to wear a suit and I did. Black shoes, black jeans, a nice casual shirt, I'm sorry I didn't include the suit. I didn't like the feeling of wearing the same thing I might be buried in one day and best believe me. And best believe me, my best friend knew all about it. Oh 
my gosh. I, this is such like a dream come true, like seeing all these poems and these young poet athletes come to life right now. Y'all, please make some noise one more time for Chloe and Jay Kwan, y'all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know about my fellow uh, adult poets in the room, but uh, seeing these young folks pen move like that is uh, is giving uh, give it up. It's giving uh, retirement plan. It's, it's giving what's next. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank y'all so much. So coming up next. Okay. So so heads up for the audience. We did start a little bit late, so we might go over about ten minutes. I hope you all are able to stay for the full program. Um, but we still have some incredible poets left um, before the end of the show. So coming up right now, we have another one of our poetry specialists. Uh, some. I'm super excited to introduce Rasheed Copeland is a native of Washington, D.C. He is the author of the Book of Silence, Manhood as a Pseudoscience, and Mud Jubilee, and is a multiple recipient of the D.C. Commission of the Arts and Humanities Fellowship Award. He has performed and facilitated writing workshops across the country internationally and at the D.C. School's office. Thank you very much. He placed second in the world at the 2015 Individual Poet World Poetry Slam. I'm sorry, second in the world. Second in the world. I didn't mess that up. His work has been featured in online publications such as Poetry, uh, Poets.org, Split This Rock, and The Crab Orchard Review. Y'all, please join me in welcoming Rashid Copeland to the stage, y'all. All the way to the stage. All the way to the stage. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Can we get a round of applause for uh, all the poet athletes, please? Can we get a round of applause for Amin and Elizabeth Acevedo? And can we get a round of applause for DC Scores? So yeah, um, my name is Rashi Copeland. Um, I would like to say that I'm gonna do these poems all together if for the interest of time, but this is really how I be doing them, so that's how we're gonna get them. Is that all right? Um, I'm gonna do a little singing. Um, spoiler alert, I cannot sing. Is that all right? Good, okay. Confidence. <laughs> God of how we years, God of how silent is, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might let us into the light. Keep us forever in the path, we pray. We in the way. We in the way. Can't seem to get out of the way. Which way? The American one. And there we were thinking that we were more than just the mannequins to tailor the caskets to. Believing that we were actually worth more than just our weight in food stamps. Seems we can't escape this bad and beautiful luck. Seems even the moon follows us everywhere like the clerk at the corner store. Signs on us like a clock always striking 12. Returning the grass back into stone. Snatching all the children gone missing off their milk cartons. And laying them back down for a good life sleep beneath the riverbed. The ache back into our hearts for us to carry like mother does infant. To keep hauling our bodies to and fro like the most elegant Paul bearing we know grow more amazed at how each day they wrap in new ribbon a block that was just gauze and caution tape and how now I look like the thief standing in the same spot I was once robbed of my innocence and my Jordans amidst a crowd of row houses boarded up at the eyes swearing they ain't see nothing and the neighbors ain't see nothing they they make fences of their smiles but can't hide the fear in their eyes and I have seen their worst fears. Most days they are in my mirror 
a scene that takes my breath away. And I am never sure if it will give it back. A starvation I'd never wish upon those who can't let pain stick to their ribs long enough to miss a dinner or two. Those I'd never burden unless I could see in their face where the famine had been handed down like an heirloom way before we were even a cataract in our father's eyes, long before our parents were curled up together in a crack pipe treated their bodies as to agree to sometimes put their pain in their children's name like the cable bill. Nah, nah, their blood is too different, all blue. And inside their bodies, their spoons, all silver and unburnt at the bottom. And I, I come from a long line of faces that only a mother could mourn. Uh. Got cousins that look nothing alike, save the striking resemblance they share in the bullet wound. We got skin so black it gets lost in the asphalt when an unmarked jumps the curb, emptying out into the corner a nightmare's worth of cops with green thumbs, ready to plant dime bags on us, or even worse, plant us back into the earth. Type of skin to be a quarantine unto itself. Could not rub off on anyone, despite everyone's fear of its contagion. This fright of what clothes my bone in shadow, grabbing hold of them and dragging them back to our gutter to live out the rest of their days. As if the moment they stepped foot in it, a better place wouldn't be built around them. One with stores and houses that call us ugly to our face. Dare us to make our money talk back and wait as we open our wallets like mouths, and they are empty with nothing to say. And I made it to payday. Had to fold my last dollar bill into a paper plane and sail it clear across two weeks. Would have died, but the rent was due. And so I kept on patting my pockets, searching for a pulse, surrendering my greenbacks to an untrusting cashier to hold heavenward the pallid mesh of cotton and paper for which I bartered hours of my living. I surrendered my living to the cashier, and he held it to the light, my life flashed before his eyes. They, they squint and I surmise they reached the time my ex mentioned a rich guy she dated way back when. I've never seen his face, but some days my daughter looks like him. I've never seen my face free and unshaped from legal tender. I stand before a mirror and can't gaze into my own eyes without thinking they were once owned by someone pulled from the womb of a ship and priced before they were ever named. I am of this tradition of being called by what I am and am not worth. My first bill was a christening. My father laughed a, a proud and knowing laugh when my check was scavenged by mouths not mine, told me I should learn to love this Halloween of wallet and spirit. Said, said you ain't a man if the money ain't talking and, and it be whispering to me in a drawl of echoes, telling me unkind things like how my bank account is but a pitiful biography of numbers, an unfortunate string of scarlet digits digging themselves into a hell hole, said, said you ain't grown until you've known with each bit of money placed in your hand you've known it to be, and you are not sure of who's doing the holding, until you've known it to be a sort of heir, said the man who died of breathing complications, who in his will left me by myself, an embarrassment of riches, merely an embarrassment after taxes. Me. Let me take a check. How y'all doing? Y'all good? I know I be going through these things. I just want to make sure y'all good. Uh, I'm going to wrap up on this last one. But that good? We good for sure? I know I'm bringing it uh, a little bit. <clears throat> me. I'm just a black man. Twice removed from God. Reincarnated through blue eyes, narrow as gun barrels, this nation is my mother, but only through surrogacy. 
Things ain't been the same since they unchained the last shackle of my umbilical cord. She has long been a peril to me, and I have long taken heed to her backhanded lessons. I am not living in a post-racial society. I am living in the backlash of her postpartum depression. This place I call home, known for killing in the same way that it prays. In Jesus' name, amen. And a man, I am not, I am sin, I am started as a routine traffic stop, I end as a memory pulled from my mother's chest like a draw from the morgue. This nation is my mother, tis why I am treated as her demon seed, her cursed and deserving son of Ham, turned son of Sam by the media whenever the officer's alibi don't stick. To quail the foul play, I am painted across it as a lunatic. My eulogy will read like a smear campaign. My funeral will be a trial, and I will be found guilty of this unshakable otherness, of this blackness which gets more jails than Yale's erected on behalf of its third grade test scores. The school to prison pipeline starts so young, you'd swear it were a sliding board, swear it were a ploy or a form of dehumanization aged old, it is making mug shots out of my baby photos, it is growing me into my spirit as if it were a cage, so no one so much as flinches when I am killed and it is blamed on my rage, blamed on a bullet that shouldn't have had my brain on it instead of blamed on a bigotry that has long had my name on it and I have died this death a million times. You can find me in the bladder of Alabama or Sanford, or wherever they swallow black souls whole and leave the cadaver that sound flags blowing in the breeze half mass on the oak trees, wherever the peace feels like confederacy smiling, wherever the boot meets my teeth like a love tale to what do I owe? This everlasting rapture of bullet shells. This mass choir song of machine gun on its umpteenth encore sung and a twisted tongue of Garvey sending us niggas back to where we came from, past Africa and back to God. My God, what is it about my hands that makes your trigger fingers so itchy? What, what is it about my body that sends you leaping in suspicion, searching me harder than you ever search history? This black skin ain't never been valid ID. Please, please don't mind little old humongous me. I'm just a black man surviving the APB since my ABCs, but one of these glad mornings, I fly away. Oh, Gloria, fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Ah. Thank y'all so much for y'all time. Yeah, make a little more noise for Rashid Copeland. Mm. Is, this, is this my pen? This is my pen? Huh. I'm never using that again. <laughs> Whatever you use, I need that. <laughs> and a 10 pack. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Rashid, for blessing our space as always. Okay. So we have reached our last two uh, poet athletes. So we. Yes, yes. Yeah, let's make some noise for the whole show for a little bit. Make some noise real quick. Make some noise. Reset, reset, reset. <laughs> we love an engaged audience. We love an engaged audience. <laughs> All right. So we make sure I, we give our last two poet athletes the same enthusiasm that we've given everybody else, okay? So we have two of our younger poet athletes coming to the stage right now. The first I have the incredible pleasure of welcoming to the stage is Namaya, y'all. Make all the noise you can for Namaya. One person. One person.
Okay. How y'all doing? How you doing? It's a cold, cold world that we live in. My mind is crazy, but I stay with the visions like I travel to another dimension. People can relate, so they think I'm tripping. Yeah. But let me not forget to mention that this COVID-19 feel like interception. I mean, in, in, Interception, thank you. Yeah, mind if I start over? No, It's a cold, cold world to be living. Yep. My mind is crazy, but I stay with the visions. Like I travel to another dimension. People can't relate, so they think I'm tripping. But let me not forget to mention that this COVID-19 feel like interception, which is the biggest exception. And we gotta stop being up on these phones in these homes. We just wanna say, leave us alone. But this COVID stuff is going on and it's boring how we gotta stay in our homes. And being around people really ain't wrong. At the end of the day, this is my song. Black and white should not fight each other. We should help each one another and treat each other's right. And Black Lives Matter, so you know we gonna fight. Police brutality, do we lose our life? I mean, it's right to have a right, right. People go well and I stop at the light because I go left and then they go right. All these rich people think we hate it, but no cap, cause they all be faking. My family behind me and they got my back, and you know this family don't cap. Running for president all over the map. So mop up the water, cause I am too wet. I go out to Florida just for a check. I am a queen and not any respect. I'm moving them over, cause I am up next. Eleven? Eleven years old? Eleven years old, yeah. Wow. Thank you, Namaya. Thank you so much, man. Dang, I found out two people got more bars than me today. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> 
Wow, okay, so we are down to our last poet athlete of the evening. <laughs> then this poet, I've actually, I actually had the ability to work a little more with, um, in tune with, this person was the, um, the winner of the America Scores Poetry Slam from DC, representing DC against all the other scores location across the country and Canada. <laughs> this young poet, Knocked everybody's socks off. So coming to the stage, I need y'all to make all the noise you can, all the noise you can for Jerry. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jerry Chamberlain. Um, I attend Kimball Elementary School in Southeast Washington. Um, I actually made, so the, the poem that I'm reciting is called Why Judge? And this poem is dedicated to Trayvon Martin. He was, who was murdered in 2012. And he was judged by the murderer because he was a black teenager. And he looked suspicious because he was wearing a black hoodie, so. Yeah. Okay. Why judge? Is it the color of my skin? The clothes that I wear? My family, my friends, the kinks in my hair? Is it because I'm a prince? The heir to the throne? With skill, swag, and the gift of gab, someone like you clearly doesn't own? <laughs> Is it because I'm from a city they want to mute and silence, labeled by endless slander? Because I prefer the tunes of BYB and Big G to start and spangle my banner? <laughs> Why judge? Is it because I'm careful with my digital footprint? I don't be wilding on Instagram? Or that my family hold me down to whatever? Step out of line and they'll go insta him. <laughs> Why judge? Is it because I set the table and gave you gems while only 11 years old? <laughs> Or is it because now you got that itis? From this fool, I just fed your soul. Thank you. Jerry, 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 Jerry. Chamberlain. Hey, y'all having a good time? Say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So check it out, y'all. If y'all can just hold tight, sit tight for like 10, 18 minutes is five minutes. Katrina, what? Five? Five? Ten, five minutes. Five minutes. We're going to bring up someone who's, no, right now they're coming up. <laughs> a board member. Yes, you. Yeah, let's get it. Ben James. Everyone clap it up for Ben James! Is, it, is that my poem? That's your poem. That's my poem. All right, so, so I am honored to be a part of the host committee. I'm also proud board member of DC Scores um, and one of the sponsors here, Wells Fargo Banks. I mean, Give it up for all of the artists tonight. If they did not encourage you, if they did not compel you to do something different after you leave here, we got a problem, right? So, if you didn't know about DC Scores, by show of hands, if this is your first time at Our Words, Our City, let me see your hands. All right, so I'm talking to all y'all in this audience, and I can't really see you because of all the lights, but tonight you've seen a culmination of months and months of hard work from our poet athletes. I wanna take a moment to describe and define what poet athlete is, okay? A poet athlete is someone who strives to be physically healthy, emotionally strong, and who is not 
just have the skill but the responsibility to speak up and act out against injustice. Do you feel like they did that tonight? <laughs> DC scores right now is in 60%, about 60% in Title I schools. Uh, and we are, our, our coaches, um, our poet artists, they, they're helping them reach goals that they have not reached before. Um, and, and I would encourage you all to think about the impact of if we got into 100% of schools and the impact that each of you can make in instilling courage because a lot of these kids were courageous. When you seen Namaya up here, yeah. When you, seen, when you seen Namaya up here exuding that courage, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. That's an 11 year old. Imagine when she's a my year old, right? Right? That's something. And, and, and this is exactly what DC Scores is doing in our community. More than 3,000 kids across DC, and we need your help to put us in more schools. So I want you all to do me a favor, take out your phones. Let me see your phones. I can't really see with all this light, but let me see your phones, all right? And if you don't have Wi-Fi, they have free Wi-Fi in here because I just turned it on, but on your wristbands, there's a QR code. We've all gone through COVID, we've seen the QR codes, and we have a QR code now where you can log on and find out how to help, how to donate, how to volunteer with DC Scores. And I am asking you, I am pleading with you, if you love what you heard tonight, if you're passionate about giving back to your community so that you can help the next Namayas in the world reach better heights, then I would compel you to give back now or volunteer however you can. They talked about stuff that you can get outside I think the best stuff that you can give right now is going and donating to DC Scores. I'm going to stop right there, but I want you all to give a round of applause for what they've been able to pull off tonight. All right, I'm going to get off your change. <laughs> all right, okay, so for the sake of time, uh, who by show of hands, completed the community poem, just by raising hands. Okay, that's everyone. So I have bad news for y'all. <laughs> y'all, do y'all wanna hear your community poem? Y'all didn't even get it? So that y'all don't wanna hear it because y'all didn't get the right on it. That's jacked up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So if y'all wanna hear it, I, I can read one. Do y'all wanna hear one of them? No, we're not doing three justice. You already tried to do two poems tonight, so we're only doing one. So this is what we're gonna actually do. We're going to post our community poems later on our website. So if you wanna see the beautiful work that y'all created as a collective, please visit us at dcscores.org and it will be up there. You can all see the beautiful words that you wrote tonight. So for the sake of time, I wanna thank you all for hanging out with us a couple minutes, 15 minutes later after the show. Um, but yeah, now that you've seen all of our poet athletes, you understand why we are so proud of them. Let's give them all again a round of applause. Can all the poet athletes come up to the stage? <laughs> clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Y'all go back. Go sit back down. Give it up one more time for them, y'all. We really want to thank our poet athletes for putting in the hard work to share their words with all of you tonight. We thank you, all the teaching artists, all the coaches who helped them along the way. We want to thank all of you, 
for supporting us, for our amazing poet athletes tonight. And lastly, I would like to thank our hardworking DC Scores team who spent hundreds of hours over the last few months bringing together this spectacular event. A special shout out to our event or organizer, Katie Mark Macris, and for pulling all of the strings together. So can we clap it up for DC Scores? <laughs> clap it up for Katie. I would love to give a special, special shout out to my poetry team, Tatiana Figueredo Ramirez, as well as Malachi Bird. Y'all are phenomenal. Y'all really have taken us, helped us kick this to the next level. You know what I mean? All right, we're going to ask our poet athletes, remember what we practice, y'all, to head out to the lobby. Y'all don't, get, come on, y'all, get up. Head up to the lobby. <laughs> I promise y'all we practice this like one time. So head to the lobby and they're going to be there after the show. They'll be signing autographs. Please don't brush them. You know, give them time to breathe. I have bad news. The bar is officially closed. <laughs> I'm like, oh what? <laughs> However, don't worry. The turn up doesn't have to stop here. Many of us, including myself, will be heading over to Clyde's, which is up the street, so please feel free to join us. Thank you again, MLK Memorial Library. Thank you to our host committee. Thank you to Elizabeth Acevedo, all of the poet athletes, to everyone who helped make tonight an amazing night. Let's give it up one more time for our ASL interpreter, Billy. <laughs> 